well over 20 years, Soren has lifted guests up into the air on an immersive flight over California and the world. This truly unique ride system sparked a versatile and popular ride type that has been used around the world, even outside of Disney parks. On this episode of How It Works, we'll take a look at the engineering and technology behind Soaring Over California and all the installations it sparked around the world. So store your personal items, buckle in, because we're ready to take off. This is your captain speaking. This video is sponsored by Light Rides, our new LED ride display. The perfect addition to your park merch collection. See the pinned comment below for how to get one. In the late 1990s, the Walt Disney Company sought to expand their presence in Anaheim by investing in the single largest expansion of the Disneyland Resort, Disney's California Adventure. This park was filled with all the California-themed necessities like rides, dining, shopping, more dining, more shopping, less rides. In its first years, the park failed to bring in a fraction of the projected attendance numbers. While the park had a few uh, unique offerings, perhaps the most well-received was Soaring Over California, a theater attraction and ride rolled into one that lets riders glide above the landmarks such as the Golden Gate Bridge. First developed in the late 90s, the originally named Ultra Flight Attraction was conceived as a completely different ride system. One idea was if you think of going to your dry cleaners and when your clothes go by in a moving rack, we were going to do something like that where you'd be in a flying harness and sort of suspended and moving along. This method was later deemed too costly both in construction and operation costs to pursue as it would require building and staffing three levels of the ride. When Soarin' Over California opened in February of 2001, it was regarded as one of the most standout attractions and truly unique experience you couldn't find anywhere else. Designed and built by Dynamic Structures, this first-of-its-kind ride is built from over 500 tons of steel and can hoist 37 of those tons on average during each cycle with 87 guests total. The structure itself, while seemingly simple, uses a complex system to roll in the fighters up into the air. Let's start with the main rider base. Each theater is arranged in three rows of three rider themed pods of seats with 11 seats per pod in the middle rows and 9 seats per pod in the side rows. Every seat in each row secures riders with a simple locking seat belt, mesh lining, and thin sidebars not only keep things light but also give riders a very open feel during their experience. Each row is shielded from above by a large canopy that will lower over riders during the ride. Each pod of seats is connected via an axial bearing hinge to a large rafter structure above filled with a number of communication, electrical, and hydraulic junction boxes. The rafters also contain some of the theater's speakers that enhance the experience. As mentioned, those pod canopies hinge above the riders' backs and they are hydraulically lowered via pressure release. This is the hissing sound you always hear at the start of the ride. Through vents placed above and in front of riders, airflow from internal fans breathes riders through each cycle in interspersed scents through the airflow using atomizers right before they leave the vents. Above in the rafters, as Man mentioned, are a number of junction boxes. The larger box here is for rider restraint connections. You can notice that they're usually done with a plug style connection to make it easier to swap out electronics during maintenance. Next is this junction box with blue tubing where we get our scent concentrates from. They don't need much, as it's usually diluted further down. In order to change the films, this is why it usually takes about two days for the swap. We need to reprogram, purge the concentrate lines, fill and prime them, and then ready everything else for the new film. Additionally up in rafters, there's this electric motor. There's three per rafter, nine total. This will come into play later. In the rear of the theater, there is this rafter structure that is connected to a large wheeled sled that travels linearly along two inclined bearings. Mounted onto the sled is the hydraulic tanks that lower the pod canopies. These beams are fixed to the permanent side structures of the ride system. At the front of the large rafter structure, the front side is connected to a hinged truss structure that hinges down from above at the very top of the ride structure. This massive truss structure along the sled and track system in the back support to suspend the entire rafter structure and rider spot system. The rigid track the sled is moving on plays a structurally immense role in the motion of the ride system. 
In order to move the sled requires an immense force where some kind of ram would have to push from behind. But the system doesn't push from behind, it actually pulls from the front. Through each track, two per system, two cables connect to the left and right of the sled, lined and then move towards the front where they loop around our large pulley, then traveling back in a channel bored inside the track. These cables then exit the track at the end and then onto large cable drums where multiple 500 horsepower motors pull back on them. While we've covered the main ride structure of the ride system, now let's talk about something that is very rarely talked about. The way the glider pods tilt forward and backward. This was actually something that was kind of hard to track down and in all the behind the scenes footage it's never mentioned at all. So is it like a crankshaft or some kind of piston that tilts them? Actually no, it's those electric motors in the rafters I mentioned earlier. At the upper back of the glider pods are small wing-like platforms that are anchored firm to the pods. Via a motor axle, these wing platforms meet eccentric cams that rotate at the end of each axle. An eccentric cam is, in this case, a circular disc that is offset from the center of rotation. Here, the cam seems to be offset from the center about 6 to 10 inches, which when the disc touch the platform is enough to force the glider pods to pitch forward and back when they rotate. Finally, the ride system is moving riders up and close to an 80 foot, 180 degree Omnimax dome screen that completely envelops the riders' visions when looking straight ahead. This projection screen is, like many theme park integrations of dome screens, actually made of a marginally see-through mesh surface that allows for speakers to collaborate with the speakers behind riders. For projection, the screen mainly receives its projections directly from the two central columns between the three ride systems, from the sides of the screen and also sometimes from below. Now, Soarin is not just a flying theater system in the dark. The film shown makes up the other half of the experience, and its creation was a feat of its own. Filmed at the turn of the millennium, the titular film Soaring Over California was shot practically over two years with very little computer-generated intervention. Shots over the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, Yosemite, and Monterey Bay were some of the trickiest shots to capture given the proximity to the population, in the case of Monterey Bay, highly protected marine life. After two years, the film was brought together and programming of the ride could begin. Over many months, the motion of the experience in combination with scent cueing was meticulously programmed creating a motion profile and ride profile. Now that we understand how everything works, let's put it all together and take a ride. After all guests are seated and buckled in, cast members exit the theater to their spots and press the knowledge button that signals to the tower person in the booth the theater and ride system are live and ready to go. The lights dim, the glider canopies lower, the brakes unlock, and the ride system is ready to start hauling 37 tons of rider and steel into the air. On cue, the wheeled sled is pulled from the front and pushes the large rafter structure from the behind, while the front truss rotates the rafter structure nearly 90 degrees. This motion pushes the entire theater section up and into a vertical array of glider pods. While this happens, the wing platforms meet up with the eccentric cams and the ride's film motion sync can begin. Again, the motion profile generates light forces by pushing and pulling the sled back and forth to create a vertical motion of about 3 feet. At the same time, the eccentric cam rotates causing the glider pods to tilt forward and back slightly as the scene rises and falls. Scents are being atomized, dispersed, and then breezed into the vent system before being purged and primed for the next scent. Before long, the ride comes to an end in a volley of fireworks above the home park of the attraction, the sleds move backwards, thus lowering the riders back down. The canopies come up, the seatbelts unlock, and the guests may exit through the open doors. The original Soaring Over California was very well received, unlike the actual park that it was in, and sparked clones at Epcot, Shanghai Disney, and Tokyo Disney Sea. However, Dynamic Structures, later renamed to Dynamic Attractions, would later go on to improve the efficiency and design of the ride by moving the loading platform into a race position and having the entire ride system rotate down and forward as opposed to forward and up. This greatly reduced the actual structural requirements for the ride system and also the cost. Dynamic attractions would later go on to sell numerous installations to independent buyers as tourist attractions. The extremely versatile and thrilling yet gentle family attraction has blossomed to locations around the world. 
One of Soren's fan favorite scenes is the nighttime flyover of the surrounding area where riders can admire the sound, sights, and lights of the city. And undoubtedly, the best rides are night rides, which is why I created Light Rides, a new line of LED ride displays perfect for your theme park collection. Each board is hand-engineered by me and there's loads of rides to bring home. You can also choose from a small display or go big with a Light Rides poster that puts you behind the controls of your favorite attraction. So see the pinned comment below to get one of your own. And that's how it works. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for more deep dives like this and tell us below your favorite version of Soaring. Is it California? Over the world? Thanks for watching, stay curious, and we'll see you in the parks.